record here. All right, is everyone seeing my screen okay at the moment? Yeah. Should have the survey results out there, fantastic, good. Well, hello everyone, uh, good to see you all again. It's been, uh, I think the end of July since we had the opportunity to get together and, and first kick off the University Avenue quarter plan. Uh, since that time, uh, we've, we've been busy kind of collecting, putting together a survey, uh, distributing both hard copy and electronic surveys, uh, translating that survey into Spanish and uh, widely marketing the survey through uh, the Good Neighbor Festival. So just give you a quick update on that. Um, the effort was about a month long in which we had the survey open. Uh, we were able to collect 400 responses, uh, 399 before the deadline and a couple more have, have come in since that time. Um, as mentioned before, one of the ways we promoted this uh, this survey and to kick off the plan in itself was we created 25 uh, yard signs that basically had QR codes on them, explained a little bit about what this group is trying to accomplish with the development of the uh, University Avenue corridor plan. And then um, to just kind of get the word out and to say that we're starting this process. So that, that uh, survey, remained open until the end of September. So it kind of kicked off with the Good Neighbor Festival, uh, got into the school, got into normal traffic patterns and things like that associated with school. And then um, we, we were, were basically developed a, a shorter survey with the intention to take, you know, five to 10 minutes for each person to share some thoughts. And then from there, uh, perhaps take a deeper dive into questions or have the discussion with this group uh, as we establish the existing conditions and kind of uh, establishing that shell of the final corridor plan report of what that might look like. So the intent of today's meeting is to spend, you know, the large part of the meeting, probably 40 minutes or so going over the 14 or 15 questions, um, asking ourselves, you know, are, we're going to solidify the work and the questions that you guys all helped uh, vet and develop uh, did the questions perform to our liking? Did the answers that we got surprise us or were they more along the lines of what we would have expected having our, our history and our know of the, our, what we know of the corridor? Um, are there any follow-up questions that need to occur or should occur uh, from the questions that we put out there? For instance, do we wanna dig in a little deeper on any of the areas in which the results were a little surprising? Um, one of the items in which I'll cover here in a little bit was we have some you know, additional tasks, I'll, one of them being business meetings. Um, we had 19 businesses, business owners respond to the survey, but you know, depending on their locations, SurveyMonkey allows us to dig in a little deeper about where those uh, results may have come from. And uh, do we need to dig deeper with business owners or should we use things, uh, the intercept survey? As a, as a way to get further information. Uh, again, just a reminder of what that intercept survey was. Um, downtown, there's a big, I can't remember the dimensions of the board, Daphne, but um, it's a large board in which we're able to put some, um, some project information on. So that could be a question of the week. It could be um, just some more information about how to get, get more information out to people or to solicit feedback in one way, shape or form. Um, and then basically using the end of the meeting, I think we'd like to leave here with an understanding of what areas of the plan do we wanna be focused on? And I think through the results here, um, I think we heard loud and clear that safety of the pedestrian and bikes are a big deal. And then uh, the, the, the redevelopment need were the two things that kind of stood out the most. Um, when the RFP was written from the city of Middleton, you know, we, we cast a wider net, you know, it's seven or eight things, everything from circulation and parking um, to, you know, public art, all those are on the table. And so what does the group now, where do, if, if at all, do we want to pivot, you know, in any way to make this a readable and a, a report that we're all going to be proud of. So with that, I'll just take a quick pause and see if anybody has any questions or comments thus far. 
Okay. All right, so seeing none at this point, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of step through the Actually, questions. Paul, oh, um, yeah. it looked like Katie had her hand up. Oh, I'm second. sorry, Katie. That's okay, Paul. Um, <laughs> it's, I was just gonna make a general comment that I really um, thought the questions were great and I love the results, the way you laid them out in the, all the different formats. I think it's a really cool way to understand the data. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks, Katie. And that's a that's a good segue here. You'll see <laughs> as we laid this down, you know, I've seen this, we've done this in a lot of different ways. Is it pie charts the whole way? Is it uh, infographic? Is it linear? Is it horizontal bar graphs? You'll see um, there's different, many different ways to present the data. Um, and again, these are kind of like just a good way to show it. We could easily translate them and do them in other ways, but I appreciate that comment. You know, um, one of the things just front and center that I'll mention is after doing this result, or, you know, a, as the survey went on, what we found out is we asked too many open-ended questions, which if done the right way are good. And it wasn't that they weren't done the right way. It was just like, for instance, if we were to say, here's a part of the, name a part of the corridor where you think the most attention was needed, and select all that apply and we went block by block, that would have been a whole lot easier. Uh, one of the examples we'll get here is, you know, Park Street or Park Lawn or Park, you know, there's just the, a park, you know, and it, there's, it allows itself up with a little bit of uh, inconsistency. Uh, so, you know, even though you do these all the time and, and you can lay these out in different ways, you always learn from them too. So thanks for the comment. So, um, anybody else? Sorry, and and just jump in if you if you have anything that that goes. I'm not always looking. I'm, I'm on two screens here and trying to make this as big as I can. Um, but you know, 14 questions I think is kind of what we focused on. And thank you all for taking the time to read these and provide good comments about making the questions perform better. Um, Jim, I know you you provided some really good feedback that we incorporated in here and uh, others as well that, you know, just made the questions better. So thank you for doing that. Um, again, if you don't see, if we ask a question and you wanna dig into it a little bit more, there's more data here when the, uh, this, the 35 page summary that we have here includes a generalities of all of the open-ended responses, but it generated probably 90 pages of, of extra things like that too, that we had to summarize a little bit more detail to kind of come up with the, the main themes on a couple of these questions. So with that, I think I'll get started here and just again, just feel free to jump in and, and, and add any thoughts you have as we go through. I've, I've plugged a couple of thought provoking questions along the way, but um, you know, I don't wanna hear myself talk the whole time either if, if, if possible. So the first question uh, really got into um, how often you travel the corridor between Parmenter and Allen. And not surprisingly, um, almost all the respondents over 90 or 86% of them travel it often every day to two or more times a week. Um, and that's good. Those that are gonna take the time to fill out a survey probably are familiar already with where it is and what some of the challenges might be on the, cor on the corridor itself. As mentioned before, each one of these questions will have a total number of respondents and a response rate to it. So they might not necessarily equal all the time to 100% because if there was select all that apply, um, that's gonna go, you know, opportunities to go well over 100%. But these were, these were the percentages that selected the category kind of go across the board like this. And then the 398, and the per overall percentages. This is the percentage of respondents who answered the question at all and, and finished, click through that part of the survey. So, you know, not surprising, like I said before, most of the uh, respondents either travel the corridor every day or at least multiple times per week. Um, no, nobody that responded never takes the corridor. So it was, you know, there's at least some basis there for um, comparison as to what the corridor might need. Kind of moving through to question two then. Oop, I'm having a trouble here today. 
So which modes of transportation do you use? Um, again, not surprisingly, it's a principal arterial roadway. Um, so most people at the very least choose personal vehicle. Again, this is one of those questions that select all that apply. So there's, you know, at least most of the people that are traveling the corridor travel it by vehicle. Um, but there are a good number of people, um, almost a third of the respondents walk or, you know, th three out of every 10 residents bike the corridor. So, you know, I don't know if there's any response from the group if you think that's higher or lower than what you would have expected there. Well, it doesn't say to what degree they're bicycling or walking. They could be using the sidewalks with the bicycles and the, mm -hmm. um, they, or they could be crossing over University Avenue to get to the either side. It seems a little high, but they were just purely biking the University Avenue. Yeah, right. I was, yeah, I had the same thought as Kathy, like maybe around, you know, where City Hall is, you know, where there's more residential people, you know, I could see more bikers just biking along, you know, like kids getting to their friend's house or something, you know, but um, definitely like further east towards like the commercial side, I, I don't see as many people doing that. Yeah. yeah, and it is interesting from doing the corridor walking tour. Um, Daphne, I think you took an inventory. We saw a lot more than, I think what we have four or five bikers and walkers, pedestrians in that hour and a half time that we were out there and we saw a few more vehicles than that. So, <laughs> um, you know, the, the fact that it's a third, and again, that doesn't mean that's their primary mode of transportation, but um, there's some basis here for you know, what the biker or the walker might see across this corridor at different times of day uh, as right. well. What, any thoughts on the bus side of things or other modes of ride share or those numbers about what you expected or anything to take away on those two numbers, both the 2% for ride share and 9% of transit? Is that kind of what your expectation level would have been somewhere in that ballpark? I guess I thought maybe the bus would be a little higher, but I do know that it's limited how many buses we can get here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not only that, I mean, there, there's a lot of, you know, not all the bus routes are operating at full capacity right now. Not all the stops are operating with the COVID-19 restrictions too. I wonder I wonder if that would have been higher or lower, but it's, you know, all that's kind of maybe being used present day. Um, maybe those thoughts have pivoted a little bit from what someone who has been on this corridor three years ago or just today might be doing, but I, you know, kind of within the expectation, again, this, this question, 99.7 um, people, percent of people uh, responded to it. So, you know, the question was written clearly and I think provided some value for us. Going on to question three, which of the following best describes the interest of your corridor? Um, so again, why are, why are you filling this out? A lot of them, um, six of every seven residents are area residents of, of those 19, as I mentioned before, are business owners, um, 34 area employees, some commuters, and then some other responses that are kind of listed here. And some of these actually go into buckets uh, as, as above here. Um, but, you know, again, someone says, I'm a resident, you know, area resident, Madison resident. I just left these responses because that is truly how the 11, the 11 respondents provided their answers. So again, um, Almost everybody responded to the, the, the question and I think it was clear. Any thoughts or comments on this question? Again, which of the following best describes your interest in the study? Being a resident, a business owner, an employee or a commuter are kind of the main ones. Okay. The very difficult question. So, I will get into this, I'll provide a little background for this. So what we try to do uh, on questions like this is to see if there's any themes that develop, right? And so what we allow people to 
you know, and A, it gets them to engage every fourth or fifth question to be able to be thoughtful in their responses, just throwing out quick sentences or quick um, phrases. This one, as, as we said, we've got everything in between from a calm, spacious arterial to a cluttered mess. Um, you know, the, the kind of the common themes that uh, emerge were shown on the right there. It's a busy street. It's got high volumes. Uh, the businesses could use a facelift a little bit. Um, could be some redevelopment necessary in the vacant areas. Um, obviously, the improvements for bicycle and pedestrian mobility and the need for an improvements uh, on the safety side of things across all modes of transportation, but specifically uh, for bike and pedestrian accommodations. So as we put together the, the matrix, uh, the 80 occurrences, busy traffic, congested, are kind of like the main the main ones. Um, noisy showed up on a couple of occasions, um, but you know, I, I don't know if there's anything real surprising here, um, or you know, other thoughts that committee members might have on this question. All right. So question five digs into the concerns or issues um, you experience when you're using existing University Avenue. All right, so um, the look and feel, or sorry, excuse me, the safety again comes up first here. Safety for both a pedestrian and a biker emerge over 60% responded the need for improvements in safety for pedestrian and bikers. Uh, similarly, uh, another one was high congestion and the look and feel, kind of going back to that last question, the look and feel of the development. It's tired, it could use a facelift, free development could occur. Um, those are kind of the main themes along with safety. Uh, again, like I said in the question before, for all modes of transportation really, but primarily for pedestrians and bikers. And then again, you know, specifically during the peak hour, there was a lot of specific comments about congestion and traffic delays, especially in the morning and afternoon peak hours. Um, the, one, the one caveat to that question too is, you gotta remember the, the, the roadway classification is a principal arterial. The, the roadway is meant to move automobile traffic um, out from the, the city center into you know, the highway system, you know, US 12 in this case and using University Avenue. So um, yeah, it's not like we're gonna, you know, our study is gonna be able to say, well then add some lanes of, uh, of additional capacity to the roadway network. That's not gonna be something our study is gonna be able to do, but it is noted and it is, and it can be very busy at different times of the AM and PM peaks. So, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the number of signage, you know, is are the signs uh, an issue out there? Is there too many, too little? 5% um, had comments about the number of signs, um, but nothing, nothing really stood out um, on the other, other responses as well. Um, as, as we just dig into the other responses, um, infill and redevelopment, again, some of these fill buckets um, already, but they chose to uh, also fill the other bucket. Safety for all modes, um, appearance, so that goes along with the aesthetics, speeding along the corridor, you know, which leads to noise. Some of the, the roadway characteristics, which is, you know, not performing right, people going into the five lane, the, the middle lane twiddle, um, and not using that appropriately, using it as through lanes, things like that. And then as we talked about before, um, congestion and high traffic volumes. So kind of going back through this question, um, Anything that sticks out to you as far as issues you experience or would have expected to hear people are experiencing on the corridor? I just have a glossary question. Twiddle, that's the middle lane. So a twiddle is short for a two-way left turn lane. Nice. So when you're in the, yeah, two lanes of traffic in each direction, and then you have the yellow striped off turn lane areas, each one of those, depending on what, which way you're going, you can get into that lane to make a left turn. Um, so it's just called a two-way left turn lane. 
You so. increased my vocabulary today. <laughs> so thank you, Paul. I'm glad, I'm glad we can do that. That's great. We're always <laughs> learning and that's, that's, right. that's fantastic. All right. So, so far, I don't know that we've seen anything that's what I'm hearing is completely of a surprise, kind of solidifies maybe what, what we may have already known. Um, this question rates across a one through five or a one through six scale. So how easy is it to move through or across the University Avenue corridor? It kind of gets um, into the very easy, which will, will be kind of described in this uh, maroon area. And then it gets into um, all the way through like the 12.82, which is the unsure category, which is shown in this blue area and all points in between as we kind of work the bar from left to right. So, you know, everything, how easy is it to move through the corridor um, from a driving perspective? Most people feel that it's easy or to neutral versus being absolutely difficult or very difficult. However, when we turn on to University Avenue, we start to see some difficulty there, um, especially during the peak hours. And then turning off University Avenue, um, a little bit less in this regard, but you know, a little bit more towards the neutral and difficult than we'd like to see. Um, but again, these might be characteristics of a, th of a thing where the county might have more say in this versus the city of Middleton. It's, it's noted for the report, but again, it's about the, the traffic patterns on University Avenue. Where, where it gets into crossing the University Avenue via car, via side streets, um, neutral to difficult were the ones that showed up a little bit more often. And then obviously as a biker and crossing University Ave, uh, biking or walking perspective, we're really seeing a, a, an uptick here in the difficulty for crossing across the street um, in that north-south direction. So um, I don't know if there's any discussion or thoughts there, but I mean, seeing 70% 70, 70 of or so are having some difficulty or having a very difficult time crossing university. Um, maybe it's crosswalks, maybe it's flashing signals, maybe it's getting traffic to pedestrian areas within the, the medians, things like that are all um, potential things we would investigate as part of this question, seeing what we have here, partic potentially some more signing as well. But I don't know if there's any other thoughts. Well, just a quick question. Um, so looking at the color, the colors of the bars down below, the ones that we should be maybe concerned about are the yellow and the blue, correct? Because those are the ones that are very it would different. It would actually be the gray and the yellow. Um, Abby, the because the, okay. the blue is the unsure category. So this 12.82 here corresponds with the 12.82 here. And then oh, the, I see. Yep, the difficult is this yellow and then the difficult is this gray as we kind of step it through this way. So the, the areas in gray and this mustard yellow color. Okay, I see. So did you sort, did you reorder the items on the bottom in terms of like the ones that maybe we should be looking at more that we should be more concerned about? Yep, like that was the and walking. Okay, I see. Thank that was you. the intention. Yeah. So this, this kind of emerged as the, the biggest problem uh, versus going all the way down towards driving, not being as big of an identified issue on these five, on these five areas. I just wanted to say so, that I think so Katie oh. go, ahead. go ahead go ahead Kathy I'm sorry okay I just wanted to say based on this and the number of people that say it's difficult to cross on bikes and walking it kind of confirms what we were talking about before when people responded to the survey about put a, a walking and bicycling that maybe it is more related to some of the crossings instead of actually biking on the on the university itself yeah, yeah, those are, and, and again, you sometimes have to take a deeper drill into it and find out exactly. Now that we know that crossing university via biking or walking is an issue, we take, can we take a deeper dive of when or why? You know, mm -hmm. maybe what, what is causing that to become the, the issue? Is it just, I can't get out into the middle of the, 
you know, crossing because it's University Ave, I can't get the green signal to give me enough time to get across, or it takes mm -hmm. me too long to get across it. I'm worried about getting hit by a car, you know. Right, right. So those are kind of some of the next questions we could dig into for sure. And, and Katie, this is one of those questions as you talked about up front, I'm like, oh, be careful on what you say here about understanding and presenting the data in a couple of ways, as Abby indicated, you know, when you have the questions like this and then you reorganize them below um, into refocusing on the areas which had had more of the difficulties, it, it, it can be a little bit tough, you know, unless you have it explained to you or you've seen it a, a few times as to what's going on here. Um, just a just a, a one more side note on question six. This this question definitely requires the user or the, the survey taker to really think deeply. Um, we had only about a 90% response rate on this question. Um, and that's that could be on how we wrote it, or it just looks intimidating because we're asking about five different things and you have to rate them. Um, but just wanted to point that out as well, that we had a little bit less response rate on this question. Any other comments? This is a pretty, this is a pretty important one. Um, in the grand scheme of things about, you know, obviously if it's absolutely impossible to get through corridor, the corridor, people are gonna divert to Elmwood or Franklin or some other streets. Um, and that's not always what we want either. <laughs> so I, I can understand sometimes needing to do that on a principal arterial at a peak hour. Um, but if our goal is to make this more pedestrian friendly and make it more bikeable, maybe it's, maybe it's crossings, maybe there's other treatments that we can do to um, instill confidence in the, in the user here as well. All right, kind of moving forward to question seven, if traveling the corridor as a pedestrian or bicyclist, are there any intersections that don't provide adequate intersection crossings? So here is where we dig into it a little bit, right? We kind of said, here are the intersections that come across, I was kind of, I'll be honest, I was kind of shocked that Mayflower was so high. Um, when you consider crossing all of the park responses, whether they just responded as park, park lawn, park place, park street, whatever it would be, the, the word park showed up 35 times, but Mayflower was the one that, you know, showed up 29, 29 times, which I, again, I thought was quite high. I, I don't know what others had felt about this or about any of the other intersections that are laid out here? You know, my business used to be right there at that intersection and um, I would watch people only get halfway and because there's no blinking and, and because it's not on an intersection on both sides, mm -hmm. I think cars, I don't know, didn't pay attention or I'm not sure what happened, but that that's always been a tough spot. Yep. I, I really think we should try to break out things that said Park Street and Park from Park Lawn Place. And I know there's some real concerns with Park Lawn Place, but I don't want this all to get lumped together because they are two separate intersections with their own unique challenges. Yeah, for sure. And I think the, the the point for us is this is one of those questions we realized we didn't write it well enough um, because the responses would have caused us to just assume. And we didn't want to throw assumptions down if someone said park. Um, I didn't want to art, artificially assume that they're talking about Park Street, right? And so um, even though it does show up, I, I have I could make some guesses as to what I think they were talking about. But again, mm -hmm. here is one of those where I wish we would have it would have been easy enough to do. We should have just listed all the intersections mm -hmm. or the crosswalk locations nearest between intersections, and they could have just clicked on them. Right. Um, in a lot of cases, what that does is it just gets people to artificially click and not think about it. Yeah. We were trying to we were trying to get them to. Oh my gosh, if I'm at the corner of, you know, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright and County Highway M, that I can't cross that street, you know, as the user. But then if you're not using the corridor quite as often, maybe the, maybe the part that the road names aren't as familiar. 
And so again, this is something had we had the opportunity to revisit, we might want to dig in, you know, and do over <laughs> and include a map as to, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's a, you know, the A, B, C, D, E for these, any of these areas? No, yes, you know, and then kind of go to the Eastern segment of the corridor, get the next 10 intersections or five intersections or whatever it be, would be. So um, unfortunately, your Kathy, your comment is great. Um, the, the, only, the only unfortunate piece for us is since we left it open-ended, it would, uh, it would kind of take away from the authenticity of the results if we made some assumptions. Well, I know I don't, I'm afraid that this is going to um, overinflate. Uh, there's some issues with park law in place. I know when on the walk, we, we heard the, there were issues, but I don't want this number to be overinflated and, and given more weight than other, the other intersections if that's not what's intended. Understood. Yeah, and I think this is a question that we should definitely ask again, you know, at our at our open house and our opportunity for people to get involved where yeah. they can actually see a map be there yeah. or at least be able to do a wiki map or something like that where they can place a pin virtually as That'd to yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, this area to solidify, okay, the of the 35 responses based on in in in, in coupling with this result, we could assume that it was probably 85% of the responses that would have meant Park Street in that situation. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Um, any other surprises? Any of these streets that show up? Basically, you know, they had the opportunity to say, yeah, there's multiple or all. Allen Boulevard, all the way down through Parmenter as you got towards the West, um, performed pretty well, which is pretty understanding. You had some investment in that corridor recently and improved those things. Um, so that's good. I'm surprised about Branch Street. There's a light and a crosswalk there. Yeah, and it, it could be as simple as once we find out what's up with Branch, is it because you hit the pedestrian signal and it still takes two minutes to stop traffic that it's difficult or is it impatient mm -hmm. or what might be the, you know, the cause for you to put that down? But it is worth noting that, yeah, Branch is, it does have accommodations in place. I just wanted to say I'm glad to see Parmenter Street rated so low after going through the reconstruction, but this survey may have been done before the ambulance crash at, you know, at Parmenter. <laughs> so. I don't even know about that. Hmm. Remember it, it hit the bank? Oh, I've seen the crash. I didn't know what happened. I mean, I've seen the, the bank yeah. the injuries. Oh my. But okay. at Parmenter used to be so high for complaints on intersections. Yeah. So this is really that was a major improvement. Yeah. Yep. And the res results reflect that. So that's great. So um, question eight talked about avoiding the University Avenue for any reason or finding alternate alternate routes. Some half the people say yes, you know, and um, uh, some of them avoid it because they're bike and pedestrian users and others, as we talked about, um, congestion or just mobility at those peak hours, right? There's probably mm -hmm. more time of day things here um, than maybe, you know, being a 24 hour commuter. You know, I, well, I drove the corridor last, this morning and last night. And last night I was like, oh, this is great. There's no, no traffic out here. And it's a different story at those peak hours, definitely. So, um, but some of the other responses that came up there, reasons why they've avoided, um, you know, it's a straightest shot. There's no real good routes available without going through residential neighborhoods. Um, people don't like the speed and the safety part of that, you know. Um, and then the traffic control concerns, as we talked about, is a, a corridor full of traffic signals and lights and people going through yellow lights and even red lights at high rates of speed and starting and stopping and things like that have all came to the forefront. But largely, it's the, the, the pedestrian safety and bike safety and the lack of accommodations to, to get people across the road or through intersections safely and congestion, largely at peak hour. And it, it's funny that people would um, avoid the co uh, University of Quarter because of the appearance. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> 
I guess. Yep. So. Okay, I think that's weird, but I'm one of those people. Okay. I like um <laughs> I like a prettier <laughs> route. Not, I mean, I will take university all the time, but like I avoid the belt line because it's not pretty. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So well, I may have been one of those seven <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> life's a journey that's good <laughs> and, and and remember that this question too as it's written you, do you use it i mean it's not always vehicles it could well, be that's just true. like Find alternative you know, roads. Yeah. right so like if you're mm -hmm. out there running or biking or or you know or pedestrian yeah, walking that's true that's that true might be a consideration to think through as well and, and i'm not i'm just throwing it out there so it's hot it's a definite possibility yeah so question nine, um, and we only have just a few more questions to kind of work through here today. So looking forward 10 years from now, describe your vision, right? We allow people another chance to think about, you know, themes that come through. When you think University Avenue, what comes to mind? And businesses, bikes, safety, and less um, are, are kind of interesting words that, that pop up. Um, common themes, you know, we talked about the corridor of vibrant activity, business, it's a destination that's safe, um, can get through on all different modes of transportation and it looks good. That's, that's what people want. They want to see, this could be the central district of like everything cool, but you know, it's also got its challenges on where existing buildings and parking circulation and how many intersections and the speed and the trucks, that's a, that's a factor. It's a, it's a, a heavy truck route. And so, you know, all these things are, are taken into consideration at the end of the day, uh, businesses, bikes, and safety. So any thoughts on if that is consistent with as what we're going to be tasked to do relatively soon as an ad hoc committee is to kind of dig in for what exactly things, what, what is the framework for that vision and what kind of keywords do we want to be building around and, uh, is this making sense or are there um, other words that you thought might have come through? I guess it's just interesting that, you know, for this word cloud and that previous word cloud, both businesses were like the two biggest, like they were the biggest words for both of them. Um, so I guess that, yeah, you know, there is this big focus on, you know, the businesses on University Avenue. Um, yep. I was just going to say that I I like um, what Daphne pointed out, that the businesses are prevalent on both. But I would also just note that housing is a much smaller item. So it seems like it appeared must, much less frequently in people's comments. But also, realistically, if you want to have more businesses, you need more people to support the businesses. Um, but maybe maybe this just means that there might be more mixed use development as mm -hmm. University mm -hmm. Avenue redevelops. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how does that contribute to a, a more busy corridor, right? And we talked about that. Does, is, does, does that work better? Does it work worse when you talk about, okay, we're going to put this building with first floor commercial or, um, you know, housing above it, does that parking circulation work and does the access work and is that a hindrance or anything for bike and pedestrians as you approach the sidewalks and as you approach entering and turning vehicles, things like that. So that's a great point though, Abby, you know, when you talk about, hey, cool businesses and then you say, well, what's going to support those businesses? Are they going to be off the corridor? Are they going to be right on? If they're right on, that promotes walking and biking everywhere, right? And um, so that's that's an interesting point and a good one. Anybody else comments on this one? Again, this is the question I was really interested to hear what people had to say on, um, not just from this group, but just how the survey results would come in on this. I didn't I didn't have a real great pulse of exactly what would emerge here. So tried to ask this question openly and honestly. And um... I guess I'm surprised that housing wasn't bigger as well, like Abby and crosswalks. 
we're not more. Yeah, we could dig in as, as you can see with all this, I don't have all the appendices for the short version of this, but we could see exactly who said, you know, how many people said housing and how many, obviously you get some of these in between the ends here that are really, really tiny that have one or two responses, but it's pretty, it's pretty big. So, I mean, there's at least a dozen or so um, that had mentioned, they see this as a housing corridor as well. Question 10, so the biggest issues or concerns that should be addressed with this plan? You know, I, we can kind of show this in, uh, in this format first, which is obviously as part of this plan, people want to see things in the plan that outline pedestrian and bicycle safety enhancements, um, things like that to, you know, promote a walkable and multimodal corridor. Um, that's, that's front and center. The aesthetics, public art, and landscaping. This one is kind of pulled together, and I, I don't think the results of what we've heard so far have spoken to this in this high of a, a response rate. But there is three things kind of pulled together in there. I think it's like it, the business doesn't look good, or it looks, you know, the appearance doesn't look crummy. Kind of goes along with aesthetics, and maybe not as much on the public art side. Um, you know, I know if if um, Randy was here, he would be saying things around probably tree canopy and terraces and things like that, landscaping to beautify the corridor, potentially um, lighting and things like that. That's a concern with more than half of the respondents. The terrace spacing right here is kind of what we talked about um, as, as a half as well. And then the underutilized or areas that need to be redeveloped, if maybe, you know, either to uh, attract tenants or to re redo the corridor buildings to more accommodate the type of investment that we want to put there, you know, as far as if it's multimodal or if it's, you know, just using the visibility of the University Avenue corridor. So again, this one had a little bit lower response rate, 83%, five in every six are taking the time to um, select some of the things that should be the biggest issues with the plan. Um, you know, and, and again, these numbers won't obviously add up to any sort of percentage because of the ability to select multiple answers. Any, anything high or low that stands out? I don't want to force discussion either. So, all right, back to question 11. So again, the, identify the top priorities for improvements or changes you'd like to see. What's the most important thing would be the higher percentages over to the left and then the least priority um, more towards the right side. So someone could come through and click five for all of these, or they could, come through and click one for all of these, um, I think was the way that the question finally got, got written. But I think we were only allowed to do five. Actually, I'll take that one back. When we, on this particular question, you were allowed five responses that once you clicked one as priority one, it wouldn't allow you to have another choice. So that said, hopefully these should, these should um, equal 100% as they go left to right. So the most important priority project or priority concern here was obviously bike and pedestrian safety um, and then redevelopment opportunities along the corridor and then just kind of working our way up, just sorted on priority one as, as we wanted to see the most important here, kind of working from the least important to the most important. So again, these types of questions kind of lend towards the middle. Um, and then again, in some cases, um, the percentages don't, you know, there might have only been a, a shorter sample size that of people that said buses in any sort of their priorities, where there might have been almost everybody given a one through five in these percentages. So we can dig into those data 
data points as well. But I think the fact that we see this over 50%, um, obviously we know that the bike and pedestrian is the highest priority here. All right, so the areas of the corridor that are most important to, uh, to focus on, 80% um, or just under responded to this question. And largely it was the commercial areas between Park and Allen, not surprising probably to many. Um, there's not as many treatments that we can probably do in the residential areas anyway, um, but that doesn't mean we can't do some. Um, but I think, you know, where people are gravitating towards crossing the streets, busy cars turning a lot more into businesses than they are their own residential driveways. There's just a lot more conflict points along the corridor, be it in the twiddle <laughs> or in the uh, driveways going left, right, um, through and, you know, all the modes of transportation on top of that, throwing in the transit lines and things like that. Um, not surprising that it's the commercial areas. Um, thoughts on that? I mean, just kind of the breakdown is some people don't think there's none of them are important. Um, that at the corridor itself is probably operating consistently between Parmenter and Allen. Yeah, the none of the above is kind of a surprise to me. Agree given what they had to delve into on the first 11 questions. Yeah, and it kind of led, it, led itself to almost, you know, most important to kind of reprioritize kind of a follow-up of that last question. I was hoping that as we wrote it down, at least you would see one of the five as one more important than the other. Um, but to see 50 responses that are essentially think it operates fine. There's no priority areas of the corridor. Surprise, it's pretty high. All right, so if you believe improvements are needed along the corridor, what specific improvements are needed in the area or locations you identified in the previous question 222 written responses were provided. And all, you know, all the responses are included, as we said, as part of the full recap that will be a part of the project file. Um, but here are the, the, the key themes that kind of pop through again, as far as the number of reference points. Um, the improvements that are needed are bike and pedestrian and infrastructure related across the entire corridor. Uh, redevelopment and infill opportunities, um, appearance, and then green space and terrace areas. And then just, you know, opportunities to put, put uh, focus on environmental work around, you know, attracting businesses and things like that. So those are kind of the main themes. Um, the first two, as we talked about in several instances, got it, it's bike and ped, and it's, uh, you know, redevelopment and fill utilizing what the core, maximizing the use of the corridor. Just kind of scroll through, through these really slow in case any of them catch your eye about ones you thought might've been higher or lower. Okay. I just have one quick comment when I just saw, um, Increased police, increased safety, safety, increased police presence for respondents. I just have to say, aren't we lucky that that's not our biggest problem? Absolutely, yes. Having worked on these corridor studies um, in all areas of Wisconsin, yes, you are incredibly lucky. <laughs> and it, it might there might be segments of this corridor that would this would you know, not of the University Avenue corridor in the Middleton, but as you go closer to downtown, there might be some areas um, that there are some more safety issues or, you know, definitely some more open areas where cars can go faster 
and enforcement of speed and things like that become a, a wider and bigger issue. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, again, so do you have any additional comments or suggestions regarding potential improvements? You know, this is there's some theme things that have been organized here. Um, some of these are just from Thank you, great job on the survey and study. And some of these are, um, you know, gen general comments about, you know, the vision of the corridor or make sure that you're thinking about all modes of transportation through the multimodal um, transit and all these other things. Um, opportunities to improve safety. I think that we've heard that loud and clear, but we have kind of the themes over to the left and just some other comments that maybe didn't make a bucket. Um, 13 of those received throughout the um, 33 responses that we had. Our 33 that also said, hi, I have no comments, but clicked yes. This is a lot of, lot of different specific questions. Since we asked the question open-ended, we need to do apply all of the different open-ended questions. Um, and then, as we said, we bucketed those into themes on the left side uh, based on those open-ended questions. And then uh, some demographic questions and, and just some, some use questions here. Um, how far do you live from the corridor? You know, almost everyone who responded 80% um, are within two miles, zero to two miles, or, and almost everybody 95% uh, or so uh, live with at least five miles of the corridor. So you're getting a, a, a lot of the area residents. Um, maybe they're in Mid Madison, maybe they're in the town of Middleton, the city of Middleton, but those are the users of the corridor that come in and out of your community every day. So I think that's, that's appropriate. It's people who generally know the corridor, um, know the road, know the location, have destinations in mind as they're using it. So. Not a big surprise here. And then um, which category contains your age? Not surprising here. Um, we had less than 1%. I think we had four, was it? Four, four total respondents um, that were under 18. And this is like any survey anywhere in the world. <laughs> it seems like it's very difficult to engage the high school and, and below population to sit down and take a 10 minute survey. Um, this this works kind of left like a clock. So the the or the red and then the orange and the green kind of go from 12 o'clock right around the circle up until 65 and over the 19% as part of the 65 and over. So this is largely what we see is some sort of after 30 to 30. Sometimes we write these surveys 30 to 39, 40 to 49. And somewhere in this breakpoint between 25 and 34 and 35 and 44 is where typically you see this distribution. So it is, it is pretty typical of a survey of those that wanted to share their age. This is how they responded. So and bravo that, for the folks who are 65 plus who may have used the little scanner code to find the survey. And surprising that people younger wouldn't have been more into the response given that that's how you had to find the survey. Couple thoughts there, yeah. And I agree with you. I thought one of the ways in which we can combat and get some more responses, whereas people, especially kids are waiting around with their cell phones before Good Neighbor Fest for the parade to begin. I did take some pictures and I did see people scanning the codes but I didn't see young kids scanning the codes and I was hopeful you'd got a lot more of those, of the high school age and middle school kids. I'm bored. We have to be here for 15 more minutes before it starts to give me something to do. And unfortunately, the, that, that part didn't come out um, from there. But the, you know, the, the responses, I, I think the overall yard signs did attract people to the survey. Um, the QR codes, like you said, did work, I think. Um, and Daphne, you can speak to this a little bit more too, but about other ways, social media and the listserv are some of the other ways in which we reached out uh, the website, of course, 
um, to take hard copy or to take the survey. And then we had hard copies available at the senior center. And um, we trans translated uh, 25 copies in Spanish as well and um, distributed those too. So you can't force people to take surveys. This is only one piece of, uh, of the tool in the toolkit you know, that we should be considering here, but it is, it is something that we, we, we like to, we like to at least have there. So, so, you know, in respect of everyone's time, it is 404. I think we don't have to do this today, but I'd like to get the group. Um, and this could probably be done via email is to get the group starting to think about, you know, the RFP and how it was written and what kind of things were contained within that about what we want this corridor plan to be. Number one, it shouldn't be something that's 300 pages long. It should be short, concise, um, well-written, graphical, things like that. But I think what we should focus on is, you know, if they might've been eight to 10 areas of the RFP that basically said, you know, we're gonna go everything from parking circulation to uh, building facades, um, everything from, you know, terrace treatments to public art, are there areas that should spend a larger time focusing on areas now that we're having seen these results that we wanna pivot away from and not have be a part of that study? I think that would be kind of the next steps to get the group together to think about. And I can definitely uh, put together a, an email that kind of asks these questions and kind of engages the group again um, so that we don't, in respect of time today, um, can start thinking about this and get the other three committee or four committee members involved as well. Abby or Daphne. Oh, sorry, Jim, go ahead. The question I would have is in referring to University Avenue as a major arterial, are there restrictions based on that that uh, either through the state or through the county that we are not going to be able to make any recommendations on. For example, yeah. is since it is a major arterial, no, you cannot uh, have a 20 mile, 20 mile per hour speed limit, or you no, know, you have to have a certain amount of room for traffic and therefore you can't have a bike lane. That's what I would wonder if there are some things that uh, we will not be able to address because nothing can be done about it. Yeah, great question. Yep, and I, and I, I laid out a, just a couple examples of that and you hit a couple more. You know, the speed limits um, are probably gonna be a challenge, you know, to get that reduction. We've seen the statistics now, if you, you know, if, if there is an incident between a pedestrian and a, a vehicle at 20 miles an hour, their survival rate is exponentially higher. But, you know, when it's trucks, heavy trucks traveling a, on a truck route, um, you know, I think capacity speed limits are, are, and are definitely two of them right off the top that we're probably not going to be able to do much about. But let's, you know, I'd like to, I'd rather look at it from throw all the spaghetti noodles out there first and then we'll figure you kind of work it down for what might not be applicable this time but that's a fantastic point and a great question or comment how about you katie or kathy or from the the standpoint of the city as well daphne or abby Well, one thing, and back to what Abby had said about um, housing along the corridor, um, how can, I think it's so important, but I don't know how to uh, reconcile that with the survey results. Yeah, I have a couple, couple thoughts there. Um, you know, obviously the housing would have to be supported by land use, right? And so um, the city is updating its land use you know, code two. And so with the work that Vandewall is doing, we have to ask this, the question is how much housing do we want out there? Is that the ideal vision for the corridor? And if so, we have to do some land use changes potentially um, and, and, and 
do the first steps with that. Um, but you, you know, there's, I, I think all those are good questions too and good comments. On Jim's comment, um, I, I guess I feel that we're still early enough along that we shouldn't be excluding any ideas. So I agree with your point, Paul, about throwing all the spaghetti and see what mm. sticks. Um, I am a little bit of a radical, I think, when it comes to ped safety. So, you know, if it were up to me, we would reduce the speed limit of University Avenue um, as it goes through Middleton. I'm sure our public works director and also their committee would, you know, potentially disagree with that. Um, I had to cross University Avenue on foot at Bristol Street for 10 years twice a day and even with the um, ped signal there that Alder Olson had advocated for it was still pretty treacherous mm -hmm. um, so I like the idea of getting all the ideas on the table and then um, doing a little bit more work with the public works department to decide what is and what is not feasible um, I know that my understanding is that with the recent roadway improvement that the, there may have been some transfer of jurisdiction from the county to the city. So I don't know if there is any opportunity for the city to pursue something like that. Abby, you're saying that which part of the roadway changed? Do you mean at, at Parmenter? Well, the, there were two phases of University Avenue reconstruction that essentially covered the whole corridor from Parmenter Street East all the way to the city limits. And I thought that the entirety of the roadway was under county jurisdiction previously, but when the road was improved that at least some aspects of jurisdictional control transferred over to the city, but I have to admit that I do not know mm. Okay. who gets to decide you know, what the speed limit is on the road. I don't know if that's a city thing or if it's a county thing. I'm sure there are a lot of factors that go into it. Um, and and maybe, it, maybe it's as, you know, maybe this, you know, if that is something that this plan were to recommend, it could be something as simple as, you know, uh, recommending another study that would determine whether it's feasible or, you know, it could be right. something, something like that. Yeah, and I think it's important. People are going to want to know, you know, why, too, and why can't we do this? And if, if, if even if it's not known, there's probably some value in the saying, if it was brought up as part of the vision, we're not going to be able to take it from zero to 100. We might only be able to take it from zero to 60. And here's why. Um, and then kind of, again, so what you just said, Abby, so that the city can take this study and build upon it. And, and continue to look in the deeper, deeper dives of it um, as things change. Jurisdictional transfers is one, um, just, you know, different maintenance at times of maintenance, you know, as an opportunity to bury the utilities and things like that. So there's, there's, there's different steps that we should definitely take. And I, I agree with the group and, and saying that, let's just see what we can generate for ideas and thoughts. And then we can kind of um, see what, what, what we can and can't do to um, at least address or recognize those, so. When will these results be shared with the public? So uh, Daphne, I'll let you kind of handle that one, what, what you're comfortable from the city side of things. Um, yeah, so I was gonna plan on posting, you know, this, the survey results on um, the summary on, on the um, University Avenue plan website right after this meeting. Um, I mean, it's already technically been noticed as a public meeting. So, um, you know, this is a public document now. And then I believe um, Mark Opitz will be bringing this um, to the next bike ped committee meeting, um, just, you know, to also go over the results, see, you know, if bike ped has, you know, any additional things they want to add to it. Um, but, I, I'm not sure when when that will be, but yeah. Great. Yeah, and I think going back back to um, one of Paul's first comments, I think 
I think we would like to see, you know, at least, you know, us hone into maybe like three or four, you know, focus points, you know, so it looks like, you know, bet bicycle pedestrian safety is like, you know, maybe one of the big focus points you want to look into. Um, and then maybe, you know, some of these other, you know, results and comments to see if, you know, this committee has any ideas of what, you know, the three or four things we should be focusing on in this plan are. And then obviously, you know, this is a plan that we can, you know, jump off of. And then if there needs to be any deeper dives in the future, we can do that as well. Yeah, I kind of see this plan as kind of that first springboard that set the table for, you know, the vision plan and that, you know, it, 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 it outlines, it, it kind of gives the public, it gives the city some clear direction on what they can and cannot do. And we can, can and cannot do as a municipality um, when it comes into a county road. Um, and, and just to start to get that conversation really developing those, some of the you know, is it an intersection treatment? Is it, you know, colored uh, crosswalks? Is it flashing beacons? Is there opportunities, you know, um, maybe not now, but as, as transit facilities are upgraded to do things, um, is there an opportunity in any sort of area to widen terraces or to use existing terraces to make accommodations better or more appropriate? Those, you know, having some clear guidance on that, um, we can we can dig in um, with with your help to um, make sure that we're we're uncovering everything. But it is nice to just kind of go okay, really focus in on the pedestrian safety things like that. When since we heard crossing the road is the hardest part, got it. Okay, then oh, and then another thing is we want to focus in on the redevelopment and businesses. You know, asking right back to you guys. Well, what would the ideal corridor look like from a land use perspective? And you know, kind of saying, how does that in, how does that impact access and circulation and parking? We heard, you know, just from the businesses from Jeff, if he was here too, would have said, you know, hey, there's some people don't want to give up their parking and businesses too. So, but is there underutilized areas? Are there areas in which we can maximize and combine better if the right land uses were were put together? Is that what's holding you guys back from? you know, developers coming in in certain areas and is just saying that the access or the parking is not going to work and kind of kind of all, all hands on on the table, but I'd like to get a little bit more direction in the next couple of weeks as to um, wh what we really want to be focused on so we can develop that shell of what the vision and the corridor plan will, will be. And then we'll start to use you guys to help us populate and formulate that plan and um, dig into the details. That'll be the fun part. So, well, we've went a little over and I apologize, you know, for going over, but um, I think it was a great discussion. I think what we can do is I'll work with Daphne um, to, you know, kind of give a summary of today's meeting and what we talked about, um, some of the topics that are emerged. I know I took a few notes. I know she did probably as well. And we can uh, send out a met, like a group to our ad hoc committee, kind of an update of what we talked about. And then I can lay out some questions and some topic areas in which we could get, you know, the group to fill out probably via email, even that kind of gets the next phase. And then what I'd like to do is to get the group together now sooner than later, um, within the next couple of weeks again. Um, just to kind of say, I can take the first shot at it and we can vet it and talk about it a little bit more about what we want this uh, planned in to have as for its contents. So Daphne, I don't know if you have any other thoughts or comments on, on that piece. Um, yeah, I think that, that works for me. We can, you know, do most of it over email and then get a meeting, you know, maybe two weeks from now um, to just go over, you know, the big topics that we want to focus on for the plan. That sounds great, yeah. Perfect. One other thing I would mention, when you post these, uh, the results of the survey, if there's a way in an intro that you can thank the 400 people who put the effort into completing this, I was very impressed with the number of respondents. Yeah, we were, we were too, yeah, it was really, really great to see so many people who responded. So yeah, I can definitely do that, Jim. Okay. 
Oh, perfect. Well, that's that's all I have today. Um, like I said, Daphne and I will will meet up and we'll talk about uh, some dates and schedule stuff that we can kind of look into. You know, maybe around the first of November is kind of when I'm thinking we reconvene with the group. That'll give us enough time to kind of get our thoughts, get the organization um, of this meeting put together in the recaps. And then kind of as we build into those next steps, really diving into what we want the corridor plan to entail, what we want to have in it um, that we want to be focused to right around. So um, we'll be looking heavily at this group uh, to help us put that together as far as vetting that and the sub, sub things to investigate as part of those. But anything else for the good of the order or we can call it a day. Thanks everybody for your time. It's great to see you all and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Right. This is Thank excellent. You. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.